Lee Johnson, hello. Time. Hello, Stan. You're still How soliciting? Are you? um, I'm soliciting, barristering, and making films, Stan. Hey, what film are you making? Uh, I'm making a film called The Entity. I'm Obviously, you're doing it. very well because I think you must have some Vacheri jewellery on there. Vacheri jewellry, it's isn't beautiful, that beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. I yeah. showed that to my wife the other day, as a matter of fact, and if we can just hold that up, it is absolutely magnificent. And it she is. wanted it, and I said, You have to pay for it yourself. You wore it yourself. Oh, you're mean. Yeah. I did have it myself yeah, on the turn, you know. Yeah, yeah. I am. I That's think okay. I've been on the turn for a while. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, I'd love it, it'd get you off our back. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. Dear Stan and girls, I agree that all men should pay for their children, but I honestly think that a lot of women use the child support system just to make money. My fiancé has to support his two children from his previous relationship and has 27% of his gross earnings taken out in order to do this. Meanwhile, his ex-partner has gone on to have three more children to three different men. She's earning a nice little income and my fiancé is struggling to survive. Where's the justice in all this? Alison from Queensland. Mm. Lee, it is a bit unfair when you're taking 27% off the gross income. I, I agree, Stan. It does. It is a lot of money and it comes directly out of the, the man's pay. However, I, I do have to agree with Gretel in that I do think this, uh, Alison, uh, I think that you do have a bit of an axe to grind and I think that you need to realise you're in a relationship with a man who has two children and whatever you think of his previous partner, he is responsible for those children. I, I agree with Gretel. Uh, why don't you and he apply for custody of the children and give her access? Now, they can also get back for the court, can't they? Indeed. And, and, and also have the whole thing reassessed as far as uh, how much money they've got to pay, how much income. The income might have changed, so consequently if the income's changed, then the percentages will change as Indeed. well. Indeed. But and that's unrealistic. It costs a fortune to do stuff like that. No, no, no. You can go back through, you can go back through, if they don't have the money to go back through legal aid, they can also go back through the lower courts, can't they? Well, I don't, I don't do family law, Stan. I, I never did, simply because it's always a lose-lose situation. Nobody's ever really happy with what happens. But uh, I do think that uh, if you have a problem with the money, if it's really too difficult, and especially if you two are going to have children at some point, uh, that his situation has changed and you can definitely go back to court then and make an application to pay less. But uh, it is his responsibility. Um, he knew how babies were made, I assume, and so he should have taken precautions if he didn't want to I have two children that he wanted there. to support. Okay. Welcome back to the Happy House, better known as <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. We have another letter. Dear Stan and the Beauties, I would like to know what the Beauties think of the current state of the movie industry in this country. When a movie as brutal and dark as Chopper takes out the Best Film Award, I suggest that things are pretty grim. What was the last Australian movie you all saw? And honestly, was it worth the effort? Jim on the email. Jim, I have to tell you that I actually saw a movie called The Dishes, as a matter of fact, and I thought it was a really great I little movie. That. I thought it was fantastic. Fabulous. And the other one was The Castle. I thought that was mm -hmm. terrific as well. Lee, what was the last one you saw? Uh, well, I saw both of those, Stan. Uh, I also saw Chopper, which I thought was a brilliant film, Jan uh, uh, Sorry, Jim. But uh, I don't think... I mean, Chopper wasn't advocating violence. It was simply stating, this is the way this person lived. But this do we a, have to see those sort of movies story. on the big screen? Well, you don't have to see it. You don't have to go to it. You know what it is. I mean, I, I adore Russell Crowe and I, I love all of his films, but I didn't go to see... Uh, no, no, I saw the, the, uh, the Romper Stomper. I didn't, I didn't see that film until recently, mm. simply because I knew it had a lot of violence and I didn't want to see it. Yeah. And when I did see it, I was uh, sufficiently desensitised to the point where it didn't disturb me too much. And I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Uh, look at the fabulous actors we're putting out. Uh, Kate Blanchett, have you seen the uh, seven, Rush. Have you seen The Seven Deadly Sins? No, I haven't. Okay, no. that is one of the worst movies oh, I've ever seen. Box. Where they <laughs> beheaded people, they oh, chopped them up. Them. You know, oh, I mean, seven. No, you know, I, I yeah, well, whatever it's mm. called, seven. Mm. That's right. Mm. And right. so I just, I just cannot understand how that movie was made. We got halfway mm. through that, not even halfway, a quarter of the way through, and I turned to my wife. I said, "Why are we sitting oh. here?" watching this crap on, on the on the big screen. But of course the thing is, Stan, you have a choice. I mean you know, well, you you have know a choice, that, but that is a violent film. Do you want to go and see it? That's why we have film classifications. Yeah, I know, I know. But anyway that's turned me off. But now I only go and see good time movies from now on. No, I agree. Okay. But, but, Who's but next? Jim, the Australian yeah. film oh, yeah. industry is fantastic. Something. Yeah. I'll, I'll look. Lee, you're in the law. Um, why do we have a special law that says you can't go around bashing up homosexuals, when we already have a law that says you can't be violent against another human being? Well, unfortunately, Stan, there has been so much uh, 
culture bashing going on over the years, and thank God society's attitudes have changed, that but that we're has all, stopped. But, okay, but we are... But largely. All, but, but we do have a separate law now uh, in New South Wales, and I know what the law is in other states, but in New South Wales there is a separate law that says you can't uh, bash up people or be violent to people mm -hmm. because of their homosexuality. Well, of course, the law was put in, f in place because oh, the there, there was that problem. That's right. And uh, there does but seem th to be, should be that law, that one the law, Aussie though, male. Yeah, but that one law, though, that says you can't go around bashing up mm. people, mm. that it, should be it, enough. Well, I think it should be enough, too. But it shows that they've brought in a specific law because there mm. was a specific problem. More specific than just bashing up people, but bashing them up because of their sexual preference. And mm. also saying gay people can be sensitive. Well, but terribly sort of what soft. What about people like, like <laughs> people like me? I can be sensitive too. No, but soft and weak. I can weak actually and not remember. Able to I can actually themselves. remember I the last time I that. was sensitive. As a matter of fact, I think it was 1962, and that was a very good year. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Sarah, too. very good advice out there. Go and leave your bloody uh, boyfriend. I can tell you, he's a deal. Get out of the relationship and find somebody else. We'll be back with more of Beauty and the Beast. Let me just go to Lee. Yeah, he knows all about Lee. this now. In court, Lee, quite often. You know, the people who are out, out there defending these people will be saying, OK, darling, you were dressed in a skimpy skirt, it was low cut, it was see-through, um, you were made up to the nines, trying to give the impression that indeed they were asking for it. Um, Stan, really, the cross-examination that you're able to uh, direct at someone who alleges that they've been raped is fairly limited, really. But a lot of them do bring it up in court, though, don't well, they? I mean, I've sat there in the back of the court sometimes when this sort of thing has been brought up. The thing is, I think, unfortunately, some, some women do make up that they've been raped. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, that then makes it hard for the women who have been raped to, uh, you know, bring, get a secure conviction. And, of course, a lot of women who've been raped don't want to go why through don't the they trauma allow, of the trial. Why don't they allow, in, in a lot of these cases, to bring in a lie detector into it? Well, um, in America, they do have lie detector tests as admissible evidence. In Australia, lie detector tests are not admissible. Uh, I suppose because people can fool the lie detector, but... But, uh, but surely it's another assistance to, to, to the judges I, and the jury think, in trying to sort of work out I whether... I think it would be of assistance. In yeah. fact, uh, now that the DNA testing is more widely acceptable, although that has a lot of problems too. Mm. I had a case once where a, a, a very elderly woman had been raped and I begged the police to do a DNA test because my client assured me that he hadn't done it. And I did not relish the prospect of cross-examining a, a lady, a lovely lady who I think was 84 at the time, uh, on the fact that she was mistaken. Well, I said she was mistaken because my client said it wasn't him. So uh, he obviously uh, didn't remember it because the D eventually we did get a DNA test. But I begged the police for a DNA test. I said, please don't. So he got off. Don't make, no, no, he pleaded guilty. But oh. he, he, begged, he, be he begged for a DNA test because he had no recollection of it. Oh. And, uh, he, had, he had no recollection? Mm, Why yeah. is that? Well, well, he wanted the DNA test. He, he, he had drugged out. He, he was drugged out. Mm. And, uh, and of course, I had to go, I begged the police, I had to go to court and get a court order that they actually DNA test, do a DNA test. And but if he'd already said that he was guilty of doing no, it. No, he said he was innocent. He was innocent. He said, well, he said he was innocent. He couldn't remember it. And even when the DNA came back and I said, I explained to him, the DNA test will so prove did, did if you've done it. Did the judge then uh, use that as an excuse to let him off or no, diminish no, no. Re uh, responsibility? Uh, no, he was, uh, he was sentenced to a jail term as yeah. a result. He well, pleaded, a long, he pleaded a long jail guilty. Term? Uh, I think so, Stan, yes, it was. Okay. A, 